Hi there. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to start um, talking about some shortcuts to differentiation. And the first section that we're going to start in um, involves derivative formulas for powers and polynomials. And what I'm going to do is establish four rules um, that we will begin with. I cannot emphasize enough, it is really important to practice these um, as much as you can because the more solid you are with this material as we proceed to other um, techniques to uh, differentiation, um, it'll just help you out a lot to have this kind of established as your base. All right, so I think that you would grant me that it would be a pain to always have to use the limit definition of the derivative. So what we have are some rules um, that actually come straight from the limit definition of the derivative. So let's go through them. Now some of these um, I will provide some motivation for. Some of them I will just state. Of course, if you ever have questions and want to talk about where these formulas come from, please, please ask. So the first rule is that the derivative of c, where c is a constant function, is zero. In other words, the derivative of any constant is zero. Now, we could do this formally, um, me proving it to you using the limit definition of the derivative, but let's use our intuition here. What is a constant function? Well, essentially it's a horizontal line. Okay, now by this graph, let's talk about the derivative. I think you'll grant me that no matter where we are on this line, the slope of the tangent line is always equal to zero. Okay, so by definition, since the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, we get that the derivative of any constant is zero. So if I ask you the derivative of what's 1,728, you're going to say zero. All right, now our next rule is very important. That's called our power rule. And what the power rule says is that the derivative of x raised to any power is, well, you bring your exponent down in front, n times x to the n minus first power. Okay? So, for example, if I tell you that y is equal to x squared, then to take the derivative, what we would do is we would bring our exponent down in front and then subtract one from our exponent. So we get that the derivative of x squared is 2x. Now we've done examples in where we took the derivative of x squared and I think you'll grant me that that is precisely what we got. Um, the derivative of x to the 17th power, again, you bring your exponent down in front and then you subtract one from your exponent. Now in practice, you're going to get used to these enough that you're going to go straight from here to the end step. I'm just showing you the middle process since I'm just introducing this idea to you. All right, so what if I asked you, what is the derivative of 5x? Ooh, excuse me. We haven't done that rule yet. What is the derivative of x? Well, that's x to the first power. So you bring your exponent down in front and then you subtract one. Well, what do we have? We have one times x to the zero, which is one. Here's what I want you to note, okay? And then I'll do the five x momentarily. Sorry about that. Is that when we had our function y equals x, notice your coefficient of x is 1, and that's precisely what your derivative of. But let's take a step back and use our brains, okay? This is our identity function. This is a line with slope equal to 1, and I think you'll grant me that no matter where you are on this line, the slope of the tangent line at any point is the slope of the line itself, which is just 1, okay? All right, 
So a couple more examples using that power rule. What if I have y equals the square root of x? Well, I claim we can take our derivative here. The first thing that you want to do is change the radical to a rational exponent. And then we'll follow along. You bring your exponent down in front, and you subtract one from your exponent. So you're going to get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Okay? Now, if you're allowed to leave your answer in terms of negative exponents, we've got it. Otherwise, that's 1 over 2x to the 1 half, which is 1 over 2 root x. Another example. What if I have my function to be 1 over x? Well, again, we want to write that as x raised to some power. So I'll write that as x to the negative first power. And we can take our derivative. We bring our exponent down in front. And then we subtract one from our exponent. So we get negative x to the negative second power. And again, if we wanted to write this without a negative exponent, that would be equivalent to saying negative 1 over x squared. All right, <clears throat> one more just for the fun of it. What if we have a function, say, 1 over the square root, the cube root of x to the fifth power? Okay, now the same procedure follows here. First thing we would do is we would say, well, that's 1 over x to the 5 thirds power. So bringing our x back up to the numerator, that's x to the negative 5 thirds power. And now we can take our derivative using the power rule. What does that say to do? It says bring your exponent down in front and then subtract one from your exponent. So what do we get? Negative 5 thirds. Well, negative 5 thirds minus 1 is negative 5 thirds minus 3 thirds. So you get x to the negative 8 thirds power. So if we wanted to write this without a negative exponent, that's negative 5 over 3 times 8 to the x, x to the 8 thirds power. All right, let's go to our third rule. Our third rule is called our constant multiple rule. And what this rule says is as follows. If C is some constant and F is some differentiable function, in other words, a function that we can take the derivative of. We'll see as the course proceeds that derivatives are not defined everywhere. What this says is that if you want to take the derivative of a constant times a function, what you can do is pull your constant out in front and then take the derivative of that function. So essentially c times f prime of x. All right. So now we can go back to this example of y equals 5x. Okay? Why? Because, well, take the derivative. Again, you take you rewrite your constant, and then you take the derivative of your function x. Well, again, that's x to the first power. So you bring your exponent down in front and subtract one. And I think we will, you'll grant me that we just get y equals 5, or y prime equals 5. Now, again, why does this make sense? If we've got the function y equals 5x, that's a line with the slope equal to 5. 
So the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at the point, and of course, at every point, the slope is five, okay? So something I wanna mention to you all, if you have y equals x, y equals 17x, y equals negative x, when you take the derivative, and you should confirm this to yourself, you always just get your constant out in front, okay? It's just something good to take note of. All right, so what is the derivative of, what if I have, uh, let's do this one first, five, over 3x squared, okay? Well, what we need to do is bring the x up to our numerator so that we're able to take the derivative. So we would write this as 5 thirds x to the negative second power. You leave your three down there because this is equivalent to 5 thirds times one over x squared, okay? So now what we do is we take our derivative, so we rewrite our constant, and then we take the derivative of x to the negative second power, which says bring your exponent down in front, and then subtract one from your exponent. So what do we get? Well, 5 thirds times negative 2 is negative 10 thirds x to the negative third power. So we could say that's negative 10 over 3 x cubed. All right. What if I have, say, k of x is 1 over 3 times the square root of x? Okay. What would we do here? Well, again, I need to point out that this is equivalent to one-third times one over the square root of x. In other words, when you're rewriting this by bringing your variable up to your numerator, you leave your three down there, okay? One-third is your constant out in front. The only thing you're bringing up is your x. So let's take the derivative of our function k. Constant multiple rule says rewrite your constant. And now we'll take the derivative here. You bring your exponent down in front and then subtract one from your exponent. So what do we get? Well, one-third times negative one-half is a negative one-sixth. And then we get x to the negative three-halves power. If we were to rewrite this, we would say that's negative 1 over 6x to the 3 halves. Okay, a few more. Well, let's go through another rule, and then we'll just keep building on all of these examples here. The last rule that's covered in this section essentially says, in practice, take the derivative term by term. In other words, if, say, f and g are both differentiable functions, then the derivative of f plus or minus g is equal to the derivative of f plus or minus the derivative of g, okay? So precisely what we're going to do is take our derivative term by term. For example, and now we're gonna play with mm, a few different examples. Suppose I just have something like 3x squared minus 5x plus 8. Okay, putting all of these rules together. Now, I'm gonna show every step right now. As we proceed through the material, I'm gonna want you to be able to look at this and say, oh, the derivative is six x minus five, 
okay? That is the place where you need to get. If this is the first time that you're seeing this, I certainly don't expect you to be there at this point. So showing every step, you rewrite your constant. Now you're gonna take the derivative of x squared. So you bring your exponent down in front and then subtract one. Next term, minus five, okay? Our exponent by default is one, and then we subtract one from our exponent. And again, the derivative of any constant is zero. Okay, think of it this way now that we have the power rule. If we wanted to take the derivative of eight, I think you'll grant me we could write that as eight times x to the zero power. And then if we use our power rule, to take the derivative, well, okay, fine, rewrite your constant. But if you bring your exponent down in front, <laughs> anything times zero is zero, okay? All right, so three times two is six x, and then we get minus five and x to the zero is one. All right, what if I have this? What if I have y equals three over x minus one over four x squared plus two times the square root of x? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, plus five. Not that that makes any difference whatsoever. All right, so before I take my derivative, what I'm gonna do is um, write each of my x's up in my numerator or write them as some rational exponent. So my first term is three, x to the negative first, minus one fourth, x to the negative second, plus two, x to the one-half plus five. No calculus yet. That's just algebra playing with our exponents. So now what we're gonna do is take our derivative, okay? Again, I'm gonna show you every step. You don't need to show every step if you don't feel like you need to at this point. So, three follows. Bring my exponent down in front, so bring my negative one down in front, and then subtract one. Minus one fourth. Now I'll take the derivative of x to the negative second power. I'll bring my exponent down in front, and then subtract one. Next, plus two. Now I'll take the derivative of x to the one half. I bring my exponent down in front, and then subtract one and then the derivative of five is zero. All right. So let's clean this up. This looks terrible. Three times negative one is negative three, x to the negative second. Negative times a negative is positive, one fourth times two is a one half x to the negative third. And this is sweet, two times one half, those cancel, and you're left with x to the negative one half. All right, if you wanna clean up and not have any negative exponents, we could bring them all down to the denominator. We have negative three over x squared, plus one over two x cubed, plus one over, you could either write x to the one half or the square root of x. Cool, huh? All right, one last example for this section, just because this is so fun. What if I want you to find the equation of the tangent line to y equals, how about x squared minus 4x plus 3, 
And let's actually do this at two points. Let's find the equation of the tangent line. First, let's do it at x equals negative 1, and then we will do the same at x equaling 2. Now, I'm doing this for a very precise reason, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to do the computations and get the equations of the line. And then what we're going to do is look at the graph of the function that we were interested in and see how this totally jives with where our intuition should take us to begin with. Okay? So, what do we want to do here? We want to find the equations of a couple of lines. Well, in order to find the equation of a line, you need a point and you need a slope. Well, right now what we have is we have the x values for our various points, but we do need the corresponding y value or function value. So I'll say that this is f of x. So let's get our corresponding function value at each of these points. If I plug in negative 1, I'll have negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 3. So what do we get? 1 plus 4 plus 3, which is equal to 8. Okay? So we have an ordered pair right there. And now let's find our function value at 2. We have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3. So we have 4 minus 8 plus 3, which gives us negative 1. All right, so at least in order to find the equation of these lines, we have our ordered pair, okay? Next, we need the slope. Well, by definition, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So, what we're going to do is compute our derivative. Can we take the derivative of x squared minus 4x plus 3? Absolutely. Okay? We've done this a few times. I'm going to tell you the derivative of x squared. You bring your exponent down in front, subtract 1, and you're going to get 2x. The derivative of negative 4x is minus 4. And we know the derivative of any constant is 0. So if we want our general derivative for all points on this function, we have it. What we want to do is find them specifically at negative 1 and at 2. So let's compute f prime of negative 1. Well, all we do is we plug negative 1 into our function, and we'll get negative 6. Okay, notice our function that we're plugging it in is our derivative function. So, can we find the equation of the tangent line at negative 1? We absolutely can. It passes through negative 1, 8, and our slope is negative 6. So, we have y minus our y value is m times x minus our x value. I think you'll grant me that minus a negative is the same as plus a positive. So we have y minus 8. Distribute my negative 6. I get negative 6x minus 6. So the equation of this tangent line is negative 6x plus 2. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's find the equation of our tangent line at 2. Well, I can compute f prime of 2 by plugging 2 into my derivative. So I get 2 times 2 minus 4. I get my derivative at 2 to be 0. All right, well, notice now we have the point 2, negative 1, and we have a slope equal to 0. Well, we know that the equation of a line with a slope equal to 0, it's a horizontal line. So it's always just y equals the y value. Okay? So let's think about what we just found. Okay? <clears throat> when we get a derivative to be negative, what do we know is happening to our function at that point? 
Don't we know that when we have a negative derivative, our function is decreasing? Again, when our derivative is positive, we know our function is increasing. And what have we seen about points where your derivative is equal to zero? That's precisely where your function is changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. If we were to go and graph this function, let's see what we would have. Well, we know it's a parabola. If I set this equal to zero to find any intercepts, first off, we know the y-intercept is at three. By plugging in x equals zero, I think you'll grant me this factors to be x minus one, x minus three. So we know we have an x-intercept at one, and we also have an x-intercept at three. Okay? The other thing, yes, we can complete the square to find our vertex, but the other way, quick way you can find your vertex is negative, the x value is negative b over 2a. Well, if b is negative 4, negative b is 4 over 2 times 1, check it out. We get our vertex to be at 2, and we know it's at the point 2, negative 1. Let's see how this totally matches up with what we found. We found that our derivative at negative 1, which is actually a little further over, is negative 6. And isn't our function decreasing there? And we found our derivative at x equals 2 to be 0, but isn't that precisely where my function is changing from decreasing to increasing? Super cool, don't you think? All right, so have fun practicing your derivatives in 3.1.